So in this video, we're going to focus on the concept of if statements. Um, when you're creating a project that has some sort of interaction in it where something causes something else to happen, in, in programming that's called a condition. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at certain conditions in this example that we're seeing here that would create a reaction in one or more of these sprites. And so I'm going to walk you through a few of these if conditions um, to say to show you what would happen if certain things take place. The lizard, his movements are consistent. He's just changing costume and he's moving forward. But something happens if he happens to run into a rock or if he happens to run into the water. And there's actually another if. What happens if he encounters a bug? Um, so if statements really run throughout, you know, it, it could run in through an entire project many different ways. And so I want to show you a few of how those uh, ways will take place in this particular project. So the first one we mentioned was if he touches a rock. All right. And so you have here the uh, lizard sprite. You have the rock sprite. And so in the lizard sprite, right up here in this particular area, we have an if statement under the flag inside a forever statement. So the if is residing inside forever because we want it to always happen. We want it to happen forever while this uh, scenario is being played out. So if this lizard is touching the rock, and so we grab that from the sensing section right here, if touching mouse pointer, but we just changed, we picked the rock out of there. If touching the rock, move backwards 30 steps and then turn 90 degrees and keep going. So this is telling it if you run into a rock, back up, turn and keep moving. All right. So that's scenario number one. The other scenario, two, is what happens if you touch the lake? So we took instead of a touching uh, sprite sensing block, we took a touching color sensing block. And the way we grab that color is we clicked on the actual color wheel and then you click on this little grabber here and it says grab what color and so it brings up this little dropper that says what color do you want it to react to and so I just picked the blue it filled it with that blue and now every time it hits a blue color it backs up 20 steps and turns 90 degrees I could have also done that to the white perimeter of the lake but I just chose the blue because it was easier to pick alright and the effect is essentially the same and then the third one that we mentioned was what happens if it if it uh, eats a bug if the lizard eats a bug. And so rather than put that if statement on the um, lizard, we actually put that on the bug. And so I'm going to show that one right here. And so if the bug happens to contact the lizard, it's going to hide itself. And in this case, it's also going to add a point to the bugs eaten variable. And so we'll, um, we'll get into uh, variables in another video, but in this case, just know that this if statement was placed on the bug sprite because we wanted to hide the bug should the lizard come into contact with it. Um, we also made one extra uh, if statement, and that is if a bug, when it appears on the screen, is touching a rock, just go move it somewhere else. And we did that to avoid a bug sitting on top of a rock somewhere. Now, in the scenario that has been developed here, bugs can appear inside the lake, and those ones would never be eaten by the lizard. And so this is kind of maybe a topic for, you know, when you're looking at survival or um, evolution or ways of, you know, certain um, animal behavior to be able to survive, this might become a relevant topic in that area. So, all right, so that is if statements. Uh, basic if statements. Uh, in another video, we can go through the if-then-else statement as well. All right.